Welcome to episode one of the screencast series on getting started with the PHP wrappers for Kindle UI. In this episode, I'll walk you through the installation of the wrappers and show you the basics of how to use them. I'll look at a few of the PHP objects that the Kindle UI wrappers provide and what these objects really do for us. And I'll use the wrappers to add Kendo UI widgets to a web page and populate a widget with data from a Kendo UI data source. To get things rolling, I set up a folder for my web project and added Kendo UI's JavaScript and CSS. The JavaScript is in a JS folder and the style sheets are in a CSS folder. I've also added a header and footer PHP file that contain the basic HTML declarations and Kendo UI scripts and style sheet references. This is really just the standard setup for a Kendo UI project so far, a web page with JavaScript and CSS references. To use the PHP wrappers for Kendo UI, I need to copy them from my Kendo UI download. I'm going to grab the lib folder from the download and paste it into my project. Now the name of this root folder really doesn't matter that much, but it's best to stick with conventions from your team and preferred server framework. I'll stick with lib since that's what the Kendo UI download gave me, and I'm not going to be using any frameworks. Having copied all of the files that I need into the folder I want, I can open up my favorite code editor and add an index.php file to get started. From here, I can start writing PHP code to generate the Kendo UI controls. I can also start the built-in PHP web server and then view the contents of the page I just created at localhost colon 5000. Now, as I said, I'm not going to do anything fancy with PHP or use a framework like Laravel or Symfony or anything else. I'm just going to write some simple PHP that illustrates the API for the Kendo UI wrappers. For your production apps, though, you'll want to stick with whatever framework your team has chosen, and the Kendo UI wrappers will fit right in. The PHP wrappers for Kendo UI provide a set of classes to wrap up the configuration of its control suite. Now this is an important point to note. These PHP wrappers are just wrapping the configuration of the controls. I'll talk about this more, but to start with, I want to show you how easy it is to get a control in place. Now to create a Kendo UI control, I need two things. I need the Kendo UI autoload script, and I need an instance of the object I want to create. A calendar control, for example, needs an instance of the kendo slash UI slash calendar object after I've called require once on the autoload.php file. Echo the results of the render method from the calendar control out to the page, and when I refresh the browser, I see the kendo UI calendar control. It's simple enough to get that in place, but what's really going on here? How did that PHP code create the kendo UI calendar? A quick look at the HTML source that was sent down to the browser will show us what's going on. As you can see, the call to the PHP object didn't produce the full HTML layout, CSS, or JavaScript to visualize a calendar on the screen. Rather, it only produced the JavaScript that was needed to use the standard Kendo UI calendar control. And this is ultimately what the PHP wrappers do. Like the ASP.NET or JSP wrappers, the PHP code that I write does not render the Kendo UI control on the server. It only produces the necessary JavaScript to run the control in the browser, and then it lets the existing code for the browser do its thing. This is important to note and to understand, because once I start dealing with data sources for the controls, I have to remember that I am not iterating a data source on the server in order to render HTML. Rather, I'll only be configuring a Kendo UI data source that is used in the browser by the JavaScript controls. To illustrate the point about generating client-side JavaScript, I'll build a drop-down list with a data source to populate the list. The data for the data source will be an in-memory array of items instead of an API from a server for now. First, I need to build a simple array of object literals. This will be the data that shows up in the dropdown list. Next, I'll create a data source instance and call the data method, passing in the array of PHP objects. 
Now I know what you're thinking. I said this isn't going to iterate and render the control on the server. And that's still true. It's not going to do that. What it is going to do, though, is convert this PHP array into a JavaScript array so that our browser will understand it and be able to use it in a Kindle UI data source for the dropdown list. So with that in place, I can create a dropdown list and assign the data source to it. Now when I echo the results of the dropdown list render method to the page and refresh the browser, I see the dropdown list that I expect with the items that I added. And if I look at the source for the page, I can see that the server sent down all of the JavaScript that I needed to get this dropdown list up and running, including the array of items that were serialized from the PHP objects. As you can see, the PHP wrappers for Kendall UI are fairly straightforward to work with and in what they produce. In the end, the wrappers are only generating the JavaScript that the browser needs so that the browser can run the standard Kendo UI controls. And what I've shown here is only the first step in taking advantage of these PHP wrappers. There's a lot more to show and a lot of features that can be facilitated through PHP, including the configuration of remote data sources, lazy loading of hierarchical data, server-side paging, custom editors for grids, and much more. In the next episode, then, I'll look at what it takes to load a Kendo UI tree view with data from a PHP server and have it lazy load the data hierarchy when a tree node is expanded. <laughs>